sermon planning or the movement from text to sermon is, I think, a very individual process. That is to say, everybody does it their own way, and that's fine. But it's often helpful to get pointers, learn what your colleagues in ministry are doing. I tend to be very eclectic. You know, I don't always follow a set pattern in how I work with the text. But I do like to know early on what my text or text, usually it's a single text for me, is going to be. And so I can sit with it for a while and think about it and do the musing in my mind, right, about what's going on here, what questions are raised, what am I interested in, how am I hearing this connect to daily life in a in particular way. And I need time. I personally need a lot of time for that to percolate. And then when I start thinking about the actual preaching moment or preaching environment, I, I try to pay attention to who the audience is and what kinds of people might be present. You know, churchgoers, non-churchgoers, wealthy, poor, confident, broken. You know, I try to get some composite pictures in my head of the type of people who might be there. And then I want to think about one mood I want from the text. There might be more, but at least one mood. What's a mood I want to create in the sermon? Expectation, confidence, anxiety. I mean, all things that, that a text fuels. I also want to think about what's one thing I want to teach in this sermon? I tend to be more didactic when I preach. That is to say, I think there's, there's room in sermons to instruct about the biblical world, about the text, about interpretation, about the Bible itself. Obviously, that's not all that a sermon does, but I want my sermons to instruct at least one or two things. So where can I show somebody something new or make them leave church and go, oh yeah, now that I know that, I see things differently. I often want to figure out what's a controversy I want to weigh in on. Now, this might be a controversy that nobody in the congregation knows about. It might be an interpretive com- controversy that's you know waged by scholars and commentaries, but it's a good discipline for me to come to a conclusion about those things and, and try to lay out you know, here's a point where people aren't agreed, but this is why I think this is uh, the right answer. And I want there to be some sense of outcome. I want to think in my head of how might somebody think, believe, or act differently because of this sermon or encounter God in a new, fresh way because of the sermon. Obviously, I can't predict that, but by going through the discipline of trying to think about at least one of each of those things, for me, a picture starts to emerge of the kind of sermon that, that I think is going to to come out of it. And then I start writing and working and I tend to write in short bits at a time. So a paragraph here and a paragraph there that's meaningful and I fit it in. Always there's gotta be some pruning for me. That is to say, I always collect more observations, ideas and thoughts that can possibly fit into a sermon. So there's always this come to Jesus moment, right? This moment of truth where I've got to cut and save things for another time. Not necessarily cutting in terms of length, but of complexity and of ideas because I think for the most time in preaching less is more right, that you leave people wanting a little bit more, you leave people understanding there's more that could have been said about this text. Because to try to cover everything, to do the entire waterfront, is just going to finally confuse people. Not confuse as in, you know, they they can't understand it, but confuse as in mix the categories, mix the ideas, and and miss uh, perhaps the importance of some some central ideas. So there's that pruning moment that's, that's incredibly important. And along the way, too, there's room for conversation, and especially afterwards, too. I think you're constantly in a cycle of reflection, planning, writing, ah, rapid rewriting, and then a kind of reflection back on the sermon that you have to do with other people in your congregation so that you know what they heard and you know how they were moved or not moved by a sermon and how that can affect your future sermon writing.